Even a thumbnail sketch of Dr. Werner Von Braun's illustrious career, his history, his accomplishments, would take much longer than we will be gathered here this evening. So the story we'll share with you on this auspicious occasion is that of a man's life that came around full circle. You see, Von Braun's love of rocketry can be traced back to his early childhood in pre-war Germany and to the afternoon he strapped a small rocket engine onto a red toy wagon and sailed it across his neighborhood. It's further evidenced by his love of science fiction and the collection of books he amassed over the years. In a sense, these fictional accounts of manned starships blasting into space read more to him like a primer. These were books by Jules Verne, Orson Welles, and other fictionalists who would have absolutely no hint of the influence of their writing. But it was one book in particular, one written by Germany's leading rocketeer at the time, Hermann Oberth, that had the greatest impact on young Von Braun. He was appalled at all of the math in the book that he simply didn't understand. He asked his teachers to help him with his calculus and trig, and they did, and he excelled. Quietly, Von Braun had found his dream. Somehow, someday, he would design and build the rockets that would take men to the moon and then on to Mars. Well, we jump ahead now, many years to a magical time when Von Braun and his team were in Huntsville building the mighty Saturn V rocket that would make lunar travel possible. Just weeks after the successful voyage of Apollo 11, Von Braun, always looking ahead, would present to Congress his detailed plan for a lunar colony and a manned mission to Mars. But no one was listening. The space race was over. Quite a few people seem to believe that uh, we had taken money away from the public purse. We prefer uh, to see our space program in a somewhat different light. We believe that we are actually producing values, and we are producing values at a faster rate than we had taken money out of the uh, Treasury. Even before the last Apollo mission had launched, Von Braun had been transferred to NASA headquarters in Washington and away from his Huntsville home. He would leave the space agency altogether and enter the private sector about two years later. Von Braun began speaking at schools and colleges, always encouraging students to take all the math and science available to them and use that knowledge to reach for the stars. The country, he said, would need a new generation of scientists mathematicians and engineers. He believed they would be the ones, the next generation would be the ones to fulfill his lifelong dream of traveling beyond the moon. Which brings us back to the beginning of our story and a short visit during his final days to the U.S. Space and Rocket Center where he saw a group of children, children not unlike himself 50 years earlier, yearning to learn all they could about what makes a rocket fly. Maybe he had carried the idea for months or even years. Maybe though, maybe he saw something that day that reminded him of a young boy who once strapped a rocket onto a toy wagon. We'll never know. But we do know that final vision he shared with us has impacted thousands upon thousands of young people over the last quarter century including perhaps the young man or woman who will one day fulfill his dream of exploring Mars. My friends, there was dancing here in the streets of Huntsville when our first satellite orbited the Earth. And there was dancing again when the first Americans landed on the moon. I'd like to ask you, don't hang up your dancing slippers. Ladies and gentlemen, it is only fitting that we introduce as the very first inductee to the Space Camp Hall of Fame, Dr. Werner Von Braun. 